Hey, cloud enthusiasts, welcome back to CoCloud. I'm Michael Forrester, and today we're diving into a question that I get asked all the time. Which AWS certification should I take? Before we jump in, don't forget to smash that like button to subscribe for more cloud computing content. I wanna break this down into four key sections, which I'm probably gonna just cover very quickly in mass, because I wanna make sure that you get the value of knowing which certification should I take depending on role and project. First, we're gonna give you a bird's eye view of just the overall certification landscape from foundational to specialty certs. Next, we're gonna explore the certification paths that AWS offers. This is whether you're eyeing a role in architecture, development, machine learning, security, there's a path for you. I'm also gonna talk about difficulty levels. So not all certs are created equal, so we're gonna rank the difficulty levels so you know what you're getting into, including some suggested study times. Your mileage may vary, but in general, after passing thousands of people and having all the certifications myself and having passed them multiple times, I have a general idea of what the average student takes in order to pass the exams. And I'm also gonna make a comment about career impact because some of the exams are there just to build your confidence and some of them have significant impacts both in hireability and in revenue. Okay, so let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are. Now, obviously, I work for CodeCloud, and so we have a bunch of certifications available as it relates to AWS, including hands-on labs, AWS playgrounds, all the good stuff. But I want you to be very comfortable with this AWS certification webpage because there's some traps here and some weirdness, but there's also a lot of gold. So let's take a look at it. So first of all, I just want to say you can always schedule an exam right here, and this will take you straight to Pearson View. You will have to log into your CERT metrics account with AWS first, but... This will take you to the Pearson View webpage and allow you to get access to some of the content around certifications. Now, this is a trap. If you click on the Browse Certifications path, just so we're clear, this is going to take you to a plan your certification journey. And I got to say that while I absolutely revere AWS and any cloud provider, I think they've really changed the world, some of these certification paths are a little complex and unnecessary. Again, I agree with the inclusion of AI to a large extent. It might be premature. You know, who knows? I could be proven completely wrong in 18 months. So I wouldn't necessarily use that first link. What we're going to use instead is select an AWS certification. This is going to allow us to see the entire certification landscape at a glance. For example, here we are, and you can see the certifications kind of loosely in relationship to each other. Now, the question that we're trying to answer is which AWS certification should I take? Well, let's come at this from three different perspectives, experience, job role, and project. So I wanna come at that from three different arenas. First, if you have no experience with AWS, then you're definitely gonna take one of the foundational exams. Cloud Practitioner is by far the most popular and is where most everybody starts. It is not technical. 65 questions, multiple choice, multiple response, great place to start. The AI practitioner exam is actually relatively new. So this is a beta exam that is actually coming out at the end of August. It's all about understanding the fundamentals of AI. And you can see AWS is making big bets on AI's inclusion in almost every workflow in IT. Now, this is no ex prior experience needed. Notice the associates exam recommend, they used to say a year, six months, and now they're saying it's recommended that you have some experience, but they're not defining it. I will tell you that it probably should be at least six months or a year of production experience before you try the associate's exams. You can pass them without it, but it will require more project work on your part. Experientially, the solutions architects and DevOps engineers requires two years, I would say, of production experience. DevOps engineer in particular requires hardcore solid experience. And if you're doing the specialty exam, it used to say three to five years in the role. Now what they're saying is that, you know, refer to the exam guide, but I will just tell you that in general, you do have spent three years in networking, three years in machine learning, three years in security, even if it's not at AWS, to really prepare and own those specialty exams. Now, that's from an experience perspective. Let's talk job role. Now, the great thing about talking about job role is that for everything past foundational, the job roles are actually pretty clear. If you're working as a designer and an architect, then Solutions Architect Associate is going to make sense. If you decide to do it professionally at a deeper level, the professional exam for Solutions Architecture is the next one. DevOps Engineer is 
preceded by systems administration and developer associate exams. So determining it by role is pretty straightforward. I will tell you, there is no job roles associated with the practitioner exams. They are really just there to build your confidence and get you familiar with cloud concepts and AI concepts. Now, hopefully then that makes the job role question really clear. If you work in security, you're probably going to get the security exam. If you work in networking, you're going to get advanced networking, so on and so forth. I will tell you that the specialty exams are difficult, which I'll talk about difficulty in just a moment. So make sure you have that three years of experience in the role before you go after them. Now that's job role. Let's talk about projects. If you're working, for example, in security, but you're a DevOps engineer, you might go for the DevOps as your professional, and then you might grab the security specialty. Because between the two, it's going to really enhance the SEC and DevSecOps and allow you to master security on AWS at a deeper level just by virtue of setting for the exam. Let's say that you are doing machine learning, but you're also doing a lot of data preparation. You might look at the data engineer associates and the machine learning associates before you go to the machine learning specialty just to make sure that you've got that feature engineering and data lake house and all the stuff related to data as well as the machine learning pieces. So project as an aspect of choosing your certification just depends on what kind of technologies you're using in cloud in your project. So three aspects here, right? One, what's your years of experience? Obviously foundational is the easiest. Two, what's your job role? That should be pretty intuitive based on the labels here. And three, are there technologies in your project that might also have you adding additional certifications to study for those? And between those three, that should answer the question, which AWS certification should I take? Now, one last statement about difficulty. The DevOps engineering professional exam has the largest body of content, even though it's still, a, I believe it's a 75 question exam. That doesn't make it more difficult than say machine learning or security, which are also broad, but machine learning is also deep. So just know that DevOps engineer, along with the three specialty exams, are probably some of the toughest exams just from depth and breadth of knowledge. Now, what about study times? On average, even if you take a course with AWS, you can typically expect to spend about 20 hours at the foundational level over and above a course, 40 hours above a course at the associate's level, about 60 to 80 hours, sometimes more, for the professional and specialty exams. So just know at about five hours a week, that would put you at four weeks of additional study for the foundational exam. It would put you at about, mm, I would say 12 weeks if you were doing 60 hours for the associate exam, but more like eight weeks because you're going to do 40 hours. And then you're looking at 12 weeks or more for the professional specialties exam, assuming that, assuming that you're studying five hours a, a week. So hopefully that's a lot of clarity from a experience standpoint, a job role standpoint, and a project and technical skills standpoint about which certifications you want to go after. So I was here answering the question about which AWS certifications to take. If you have any comments or you want to see some specific content, hit that like, hit subscribe, leave some comments down below, and we'll follow up with you. And hopefully that demystified the world of AWS certifications for you. We'll see you on the next video.